Hi everyone, I'm Sloane from SloaneBella.com and I'm back with another channeled celebrity video. This is a very much requested video on this actor and it wasn't one that was on my list to do for several months because I have to be able to feel the energy of the person or the circumstances or the situation even if you request it over and over again, if I don't feel it, I can't do it because I can't speak with any kind of awareness intuitively to the situation because I'm not feeling it. I'm not even seeing it. I'm not dreaming it. What kicked it off for me to do this actor, who's very much requested, was I watched a movie that he's in, a movie that I love, one of my favorite movies, that I always ask people to watch. Not necessarily for the dialogue or the laughs or the, you know, fear part of it, but for the actual way that the soul resonates after it leaves the physical body and what the soul does as it's preparing to transition from a human life back into spirit or source form. You know I'm talking about the movie Ghost, I think. And so I watched the movie again and I started to hook into Patrick Swayze's energy. Now he passed away from a very traumatic illness, pancreatic cancer on September 14th in 2009. Now what I did is I Googled his chart online because I like to look at people through the through the stars, through the chart. And I noticed there was discrepancies about him being a Virgo rising. Three degrees, 11 degrees, and 24 degrees. Well, I punched the chart in and it's 24 degrees. This should be self-explanatory because it's all done by computer. The math is done by computer software, unless your software is out of whack. So I went with the 24 degree Virgo rising. Sun, moon, Mercury, and south node in Leo amazing okay just amazing pluto and leo as well okay so we have a stellium of leo with this actor that's the look that's the intensity that's the undercurrent but i was fascinated when i started to look at his chart he had so many points on the chart that just explain the energy i was feeling about this person okay meaning Patrick Swayze being the person, but it, it, but when you look at somebody's astrology chart and then you read their energy and the two mesh like this, you're like, oh my God, it is actually, he was expressing himself and his experiences were accurate to his chart. Now, the first thing I noticed is he had a grand cross. He had Sun conjunct Pluto and he had it opposing his North Node squaring Mars and uh, Mars opposing Jupiter and squaring both the Sun Pluto and the North Node. This was spiritual conflict in this life. And I'm not joking you with that. I saw really clearly and really, really specifically that this life was about him gaining his spiritual freedom. I'm going to word it like that. Then I noticed that he had both Venus and Sun in the 12th house and and he had Saturn in the first house, moving up on the second house cusp, out of sign, but in the first house, meaning his Saturn was conjunct Neptune in Libra in the first house. Neptune's conjuncting the second house cusp. That's how he made his money as an actor. Neptune, the planet of, okay, drugs, illusion, um, disillusionment, higher, higher spiritual realm, uh, anything in between also the sign of the sign and planet of movies. So Neptune is an indicator of a career in the movie industry. And it was conjuncting three degree orb off his second house cusp. Saturn in the first house is always a little bit bothersome for me. Not for any reason other than it means your first most recent last life ended quickly and ended in a way that wasn't intended when you crossed over. So for Patrick, when I noticed Saturn in the set, in the first house coming up on the second house cusp, there was going to be a life lesson with him. How do I earn my money and how do I keep my spiritual balance? That's the first thing I saw right there. So this is a theme throughout his life. How do I present myself and how do I become a more spiritually invested person? These were things I saw just all the way through his energy. Now, when I looked at the rest of his chart and I saw it. The other thing that's extremely interesting because we are in a Mercury retrograde right now, Patrick was born with Mercury retrograde natally in his chart, meaning spiritual life. I don't care how much money you make, how much in the mundane and present world you are, Mercury retrograde in the chart 
of a child, a natal chart, your birth chart, is a spiritual focus in this life. You see the clear reality of what life is. That is what Mercury retrograde is. Now, the sign that it's in will tell you the way that you see the spirituality of this life. I know people fear Mercury retrograde, and I have to say it again and again and again. During the retrograde, if you know somebody who is born with Mercury retrograde, go stalk them because that is the person that will have the correct information for you. But Mercury retrograde in a natal chart means you've chosen to disconnect from the message you got from the most recent past lifetime and focus mentally in a spiritual way depending on the sign. His was in Leo and he was in the movies. So this is about ego and then source connection. His whole chart is extremely spiritual. So I noticed this. Now, here is what I started to get with Patrick. The very first words I heard, and I was up on the side of a ledge when I heard it, was I'm fine, I was, I'm okay, I'm fine. A lot of people in his family, in his circumstances, he's telling me, worried about him for many years. And I don't know why I wanna say that, but there was a lot of worry around Patrick because he pulled himself back from pretty much all of his family members for some 12 to 15 years before he passed away. I'm not saying he didn't have dinner with them. I'm not saying he wasn't close to them. I'm not saying anything like that. But what I am saying is he was more distanced and pulled back. So there was more of a sense of isolation with him, which caused people to ask, are you okay? He is talking about dying from the cancer that he had, which he directly connects to the rejection of the relationship of the father figure, meaning his father in the life. Not that his father rejected him, but the way that he took the relationship from the father. I don't, sometimes you can say somebody rejected somebody, but as a parent, you know that your children can perceive your actions and reactions differently than your intention. So I always try to look for the intention, but what I can tell you is that Patrick was very much aligned with the feminine energy, the mother's side, but very much in awe of the masculine or father's side of the family, but did not get the emotional connection that he needed. It was more of a dissociation, a disconnection. And when I go through that, he then shows me his wife, okay? So his wife of many years, Lisa. He shows me the wife. The wife is an interesting figure because when I focus on the energy with that, I get her energy connecting to the father's energy. Now, he's telling me to back it up a little bit right now as I'm talking because I'm asking in my head how he got connected to his wife. And I think we all know that he was a dancer, she was a dancer, the mom ran a dance school. But this was different. This was, I'm going to use a very strange word, past life, okay, that's not the strange part, past life repercussions for choices and actions and being pulled back into a similar circumstance with a similar player from a past life. So he is telling me this is couple tangled in the most recent past life and that this was a setup and connection in this life. So when he met this wife, it was set up for him to meet her. This is from outside of the physical experience, the world that we live in as a, you know, as a man, as a woman, as, you know, kids in our family, however that is. This was set up for him from a most recent past life. He had no choice but to run smack dab into her. He's telling me, and when I say that, I'm getting images in my head, that his mother facilitated this based on something that the mother felt compelled to do. In other words, it wasn't even like a choice of, you know, oh, that's his type, that's the kind of girl he likes. I mean, his wife is attractive, so I don't doubt any of those things. However, this is coming on a more raw level, like a raw, like, wow, that girl, she needs to be with my boy. It's, it's that rawness, uh, spiritual, uh, past life, bound to in this life. So there was some kind of an agreement that was carried over because of the way that Patrick left his most recent past life. And that's what I wanted to tell you with Saturn in the first house of a natal chart of anybody. I don't care who you are. You could be a gardener. You could be a hairdresser, a school teacher, an astronaut, a, a physician. I don't care. Saturn in the first house means you made a quick exit from the most recent past life. Exit and out. Now in Patrick's 
case, he is a 24 degree Virgo rising, but Saturn is in Libra. Neptune is in Libra. Both of those planets are moving towards the second house cusp with, with Neptune being within three degrees of that cusp. Neptune on the second house cusp of how we make money and what our values are almost will tell you there's a career in movies, film, entertainment, or drug dealing, actually, it could be that, but I mean, I can go just as that way. Look up Pisces, look up ne Neptune, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Neptune is a planet of illusion, delusion, um, higher vibration spiritually. So it also rules going into the astral level and the ethers and beyond. Jupiter ru more rules moving past this world into the next. So when we're talking about Patrick, there's that element. And then with the Grand Cross, which I described as a spiritual Grand Cross, uh, from Sun conjunct Pluto, opposing North Node, squaring Mars, in opposition to Jupiter, and square, 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 all the way around, that is what drove him to try to find the reality and the balance that was missing in the most recent past life. So what does that mean? That means that somebody in a, in a that has a chart like Patrick Swayze and moves through from that life to this life was really out of balance in the past life as far as his spiritual practice. So there was something that went on in the most recent past life that he was trying to relieve or release or um, distance himself from because it wasn't spiritually balanced. So this could be like, you know, if you were a cult member or, you know, Jonestown, that kind of thing, uh, Guyana, Jonestown, Jim Jones, you could be, that, that could be your religion and you could be focused like that, but that focus is very unbalanced and not realistic because you're following one person who fancies himself one way and you're basing all your spiritual religious concept principle on this one person. Patrick was here to learn in this life how to find true, authentic spirituality. Now, when I'm moving again to the situation with his wife, at first it was very romantic, he shows me. He grabs her hand and he twirls her around and pulls her tight. This is, this is a dancer's move he's showing me. And he's showing me that and he's saying it was very much like that in the beginning, but I didn't see. Okay, so I'm going to wait on that one. He didn't see correctly with that Neptune on the second house that maybe somebody is presenting themselves with having the same values as him, but doesn't. Okay, he didn't see this. He goes into the family family dynamic and he loved his family deeply, but there was a long period of time, 12 to 15 years, where his family was more on the outskirts of his thoughts than it was in the in you know in in his immediate environment. He talks about how he died and the the reality of how he died, the way that he's explaining it to me, he's showing me his physical body, which was really quite beautiful. He died, I think he was 57. I mean, if you add it up, I haven't, didn't actually add it, but I think it's 57. When you, when you look at his energy and you look at his vibration, he's showing me that he went inside of himself and into a lower vibration where the cancer was able to form. So there was a little bit of stagnation, but he also, when he was in that vibration, there was an element, okay, this is going to sound really strange. There was an element of um, frequency that allowed another form of life to inhabit his body. This is how he's saying it to me. Obviously, he doesn't know this because nobody who gets cancer is like, yeah, there's a little alien in my body and it's inhabiting, but that's what he's making me feel like. So his body was perfect alkaline for this species to inhabit. That's one thing that happened. The other thing that he's telling me is he had a ferocious addiction which caused his cancer as well, if we're looking at it in the most traditional sense of the word of cancer. So you smoke, you drink, you drug. These are things that are known to be carcinogens and toxic. So he brought that on top of everything else. Now, what he does tell me is he shows me his mind shifting. So if I'm him, he shows me his mind kind of collapsing in on itself from the right side, the masculine side, to the feminine side. His weakness was women. And I don't mean it in the traditional sense of um, 
I want, you know, a lot of women and a lot of sex. I'm not saying he didn't. What I'm saying to you is that's not what he's talking about with his weakness. His weakness was women and his wife controlled him. There I said it without being a bitch. His wife controlled him. He allowed his wife to play dominance over his own thoughts and feelings in this life, which I found also extremely interesting, reflected in his chart with that Venus and the sun, in, in, you know, in the 12th house. Now, he is telling me that he was, okay, he saw his wife, he loved his wife, he went with his wife, but he's showing me more along the lines of this was decided for him and this is why he went where he went, the way that he went. So I don't know if he's talking like he soulmate wise saw this and then decided to date her or I get the feeling it was decided by his family. So his family decided that this would be an ultimate pairing for him as a person. He was too young and then he became too damaged to change it is what he tells me. So on an emotional level, Patrick was trying to facilitate this life through a spiritual practice, but was thrown into the limelight and the movie light, he shakes his head. I don't know why I wanted to do that. Some of it was for fun for him, but other times he was, what, what he's showing me, what he's showing me about his career, he's showing me a bucket going down a hill into the river, and he's showing me two ro ropes going through the bucket. The bucket is in the river and people are pulling the ropes like this. The bucket goes around like a chairlift and back up the hill. They toss the water out without regard. In other words, they look and they toss it out and they look to the bottom of the water and they're looking for little nuggets of gold and they throw it back down there and this little bucket goes up and down, up and down, up and down. He is basically letting me know that the reason he went into acting was not necessarily a choice of his own per se, like, oh my God, I wanna be an actor, I have to be an actor. It was, oh my God, I love acting and I'm really good at it and I can do this easily and I can make a shit ton of money, so I'm going to do that. But what he didn't realize is once he stepped into that, he became that little bucket going around and around and around. His wife was more of a controller of him and I don't think he means like, she's dominant, she kicked his ass, that kind of thing. I really feel that this was business subversion between the two of them and I'm talking on a soul level. I believe his soul reincarnated back so quickly in order to find spiritual balance but got sidejacked or hijacked um, into another life where he could be the little bucket bringing back the gold, bringing back the gold, bringing back the gold. That's how I get that he felt. That's how his life was. That's what happened in his life. So when I see this, I know that this was not a harmonious thing for him. And what happens when we're not harmonious? We drug, we drink, we do all kinds of things. We end up in situations we don't want to be in. This is what happens. We end up in these situations that we have no no conscious focus on why we are in these particular situations. This is what I feel with him. He progressively got sadder. Um, I see him, he has the energy of a fox. He's very, very smart. So he could see who wanted what from him and why, but his wife was his controller and he's talking about the relationship that they had. He shows me the beginning impression, the beautiful impression of this couple on a soul level and I believe him. I believe him in the beginning. I believe him so much in the beginning, but as his energy started to change and he started to go more into spiritual practice. Now, I don't think he was like running around with a turban on his head, you know, praying all day long. I'm talking about texture of experience, daily experience. I touch the ground. I, I, you know, I focus on my garden. I work with my horses. I'm out in nature. I go to the mountains. I'm by myself a lot. His whole life was that of spiritual practice while being flipped and being the bucket basically a workhorse up and down, up and down, looking for gold. I keep, I keep hearing the word gold. Like you take the bucket to the water, you scoop everything up, you throw the water out, which is the real gold. If you are on this planet, water is tremendous, but they throw the water out and they're looking for these tiny nuggets of literal gold. He's showing me the struggle that he had with the people around him in his life and how much that caused him pain. There was a lot of things. He's very, very focused on 
touching with his hands, touching, feeling, very, very spiritual. He lost hope in his life, and I will say the relationship that he had with his wife, contrary to what they're always telling you on the TV, on the media, whatever, was not what it was cracked up to be. He loved his wife tremendously. I don't think the love was reciprocated the same way, and there was a lot of tension, and he was somewhat isolated for his family. Now, doesn't mean his wife didn't love him. I'm assuming she did love him. Obviously, she said she did, so I'm going to take her at her word. What I mean by that is he was unable to process the way that they interacted together, and that style of love was difficult for him. He was unable to pick that energy up as being free and uncomplicated. Now, that goes to his Virgo rising. All y'all with the Virgo rising, okay? Virgo rising learns through the world that nobody and nothing is perfect. Their early life is spent and focused on trying to be perfect. That's why he kind of goes like this. He goes, yeah, that's why I could do everything I could do and I could do it really well because he was being a Virgo rising. He was particularly trying to get the attention of his family members and do good. He would have definitely been critiqued a lot growing up big time because a Virgo rising is going to be ripped down and they're usually very attractive and they usually have smart and they're, you know, all of these things. Keep in mind, he was a Leo. So you're going to blend all of those planets together like, like, like a shake, like a smoothie. You're going to blend it together and there's a beautiful concoction at the end. This man would have been critiqued and criticized. I almost feel like the when I'm looking at Patrick Swayze's energy, I almost feel like he didn't have a lot of control in his life. Obviously he did, the movies he picked, his agents, his you know, lawyers, his managers, his wife, but he didn't have a lot of control in his life. Now my eyes are getting really heavy now because he's showing me the death process. Everybody wants to ask this about him. He's showing me the death process. My eyes are closing. He's very medicated at the end of his life. Very, very medicated. My, literally, my eyes are closing. He crossed over almost instantaneously, was pulled out of his body. He took probably what I'm getting, the three-year equivalent of earth time to uh, structuring his energetic level. It would have taken three years on this side, but in there it's just like a blink of an eye. His energetic level on the soul side. So there was some balancing out of that energy. He tried desperately to live up to his karma and was extremely disappointed at some of the choices that he had to make in his life. I'm going to say this to you. I feel like he crawled back into this life after being kind of captured in the most recent past life. By captured, I mean cajoled, pushed into a new life in a different way. This is what I get for him. I don't feel that this life was the way that he anticipated and I feel like he lived this life working out past life karma. So there's two recent lifetimes where he was a celebrity, an actor, a person in front and center of the camera. That one, he didn't focus correctly on what kind of spiritual progress he made. He kind of was focused in the wrong direction for his soul. In this life, he was all about finding the balance. So it's two really different kinds of energy. And my eyes are shutting so much right now, I'm going to do video number two on this. But this is video number one on the very, very... Um, expressive Patrick Swayze. And once again, my name is Sloan from SloanBella.com.